Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look at Command Modern Operations, the Cashmere Fire DLC. Cashmere Fire is a brand new DLC that uh, came out a couple of weeks ago, I think. Uh, it's the newest DLC for Command Modern Operations, and it takes place in a hypothetical near uh, future conflict between India and Pakistan. Uh, basically the year is 2024 and for a variety of reasons tensions have ratcheted up between the indian government and the pakistani government leading to a campaign presumably meaning there will be a, a hypothetical war involved here um, interestingly enough this particular dlc has you fighting from both sides fighting as both the indians and the pakistanis depending on the particular scenario so it's not like you're following one force or one country and trying to win you know, in, in a conflict that way, it's more of a um, series of different missions with different objectives and your goal is to sort of figure out how to overcome each one. But I'm assuming the end is sort of foredained if it's if, if you're playing both sides. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and jump in. So the first per scenario in the campaign is called Border Skirmish. It is putting you in the shoes of the Pakistani forces during a initial scuffle. So the Indians have sent troops across the border into Pakistan uh, to chase some insurgents, I guess. They crossed the border, they, you know, they, they fought some stuff. And uh, the Pakistanis warned the Indians, if you do this again, we're going to retaliate against you. And the Indians, lo and behold, do it again. Uh, and so our mission is to retaliate against the Indian forces that are violating Pakistani territory. So you can see here, this is the briefing of the first scenario. Uh, Indian mechanized forces have moved across the border for a second time in three days. They've been warned, and this time they will suffer consequences. Eliminate three enemy forward operating bases near the border in southern Kashmir and northern Punjab. Uh, forward operating bases Serpent, Hydra, and Harpy are already located for striking. In addition, engage Indian armored and mechanized forces that have crossed the border. Their exact locations are unknown, however, they're reported to be east of Lahore and near Shekhargar uh, and near Hadali. Um, we have three different air bases, PAF Murd, Minas, and Sakurdu, uh, all at our disposal. Uh, we need to neutralize these stated high value targets, the three forward operating bases and the enemy um, armored units. There are also other threats uh, that are uh, such as SAMs and Indian Combat Air Patrol uh, targets uh, that we can neutralize as well. Um, but I don't think we get points for them. I think we only get points for eliminating the enemy armored formations and the forward operating bases. So you can see here we have six Mirage 3Os. We have six F-16Cs, uh, some J-plus variant, which I'm assuming is a Pakistani uh, variant. Four Chinese-built Z-10 attack helicopters, one Falcon 20 offensive counter uh, offensive electronic countermeasures aircraft, eight JF-17 Block 3s. The JF-17 is an aircraft that, for whatever reason, I have a, a uh, interesting fascination with. It's a joint Pakistani-Chinese uh, multi-role aircraft that is kind of like a poor man's F-16, single-role multi or single-engine multi-role fighter. Uh, pretty new. I think it's like been designed and built in the last 10 to 15 years. It's actually just started to get some traction with a couple of different governments in terms of foreign military sales, which makes a lot of sense because it could definitely per perhaps play the role of replacing some M MiG-21s or um, Chinese, you know, knockoffs of that or maybe some older equipment uh, at, a, at a pretty affordable cost. Uh, I think its effectiveness, there's a lot of question marks there because it's really only seen very limited combat so far. Um, six F-16As, uh, the M variant, um, uh, which I'm guessing AM is another Pakistani variant of the F-16A, I would assume. We have one Saab 2000 airborne early warning radar aircraft, four Mirage 5Fs. Enemy aircraft are known to be MiG-29s and Su-30s in combat air patrol. Uh, so the MiG-29, definitely something that I think our aircraft should be able to deal with. The Sukhulov 30, however, if it's the MKI variant, which is sort of a more modern Indian uh, import, that could be a real challenge for us to deal with without taking pretty heavy casualties. Additionally, there are man pads, which are basically like stingers, although probably like SA-7s and 24s, a Russian variants of uh, their version of like a handheld uh, SAM. Uh, and show rods, I don't know what those are, around the Ford operating bases. Armored ground forces that have also pressed into Pakistan. 
Uh, there's a high volume of civilian air traffic over both countries. Avoid attacking these. Radars and SAMs aren't targets of, the mi of this mission. Only attack them if they stand in the way of completing the objectives. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and enter the scenario. So you can see here, uh, one of the kind of neat things with command is the ability to just kind of rotate and zoom in on any spot in the planet, but obviously for this DLC, we're fighting on the Indian-Pakistani border. So you can see if we zoom in here, uh, we can see there are uh, the three Ford operating bases, which our primary targets are, Ford operating base Hydra, Harpy, and uh, Serpent. Uh, there are known positions here. Those are three known positions. There's also a known PSM 33 MK2. There is a known SAM SA3 Goya battery. Uh, there's a known airfield and then another SA3 battery here in the south. Another airfield further south here. And then also uh, a known SA3 battery up here further into the in the north. Our own positions consist of multiple radar facilities, a MPDR-45, a couple of those radar facilities. Uh, we also have a HQ-2, which is basically, I believe, a Chinese-built uh, SA-2 guideline. Um, and then you have a couple of airfields. We've got PF MERD, uh, MINAS. Those are the two airfields with the bulk of our aircraft, and we have a few mirages up here in the north. Additionally, we do have one surface-to-surface -surface missile battery. Additionally, we do have one surface-to-surface -surface missile battery, a HADA-7 Babur uh, Tel uh, transporter erector launcher. Uh, that is a basically a surface-to-surface -surface missile um, that is a smart uh, a smart weapon. So it is essentially like an Indian no or not an Indian a Pakistani knockoff of the Tomahawk cruise missile. In fact, uh, there was at least this is according to Wikipedia. So take that as it is. Um, one of the Pakistani generals claimed it was a direct copy of the Tomahawk uh, by the Pakistanis. So we do have one battery of that with 16 of these things. Those could be useful, although I'm guessing if we try to just launch these off at the three FOBs, they'd probably get knocked down by enemy SAMs. Additionally, there are unknown enemy forces here on the map. So there's reported enemy locations at three different waypoints or three different reference points on the map. Uh, so that's something for us to be aware of as well. So first things first, um, let's take stock of our forces. Murd, what's all there? Uh, you can see here we've got our four Z-10 attack helicopters, our ECM aircraft, six FT F-16Cs. All the F-16s uh, at this base are C variants, and they also are carrying J GBU-24s. Uh, they also have two AIM-120 AMRAMs on them as well, uh, so that does give them some long-range uh, air dominance capabilities. Uh, we have four Barak CH-3s, uh, which are Pakistani UAVs. And then we've got six Mirage uh, 3s carrying low drag uh, Mark 82 dumb bombs, as well as some drop tanks. If we move north, we'll see that PAF Mindas has our other large complement of aircraft. One Saab 2000 airborne early warning radar, eight JF-17s carrying some laser guided bombs, uh, and six F-16As, four of those in, or sorry, two of those in ground attack variants carrying GBU-12 bombs, Mark 82 laser guided bombs, but four of them are in air-to-air -air configurations uh, loaded out with AIM-120s uh, AMRAMs, uh, looks like four of those and each aircraft, and two Sidewinders. I think there's two AMRAMs on each of the GBU-12 F-16As as well. Okay, so first things first, what are we gonna do here? We know that there's, or we have reports of Indian locations here at these two bases, or in front of these two Ford operating bases, as well as off to the east here. Uh, if we go to the scoring table, we need to score at least 40 to win a victory in this particular battle. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and set up uh, a couple of reference points here so we can get a few missions going. So I'm going to set up three reference points in the south. Um, reference points 140 or 1146, 47, and 48. We're going to go ahead and create a new mission here. We're going to create a support mission um, and we're going to call it UAV South. I'm going to go ahead and assign one of our UAVs to this particular base. I'm not going to change their um, emissions or anything like that. We're just going to call it UAV South. Crap. 
Um, and then we're going to go ahead and remove these three Indian locations. So it's just these three. So it'll be kind of a triangle patrol arc for this UAV. We're going to do the same thing here in the north. And we're going to be original. We're going to call this one UAV North. So that's going to be 49, 50, and 51. Actually, we can add the fourth point there. South, set it as a support mission. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and let's see. Let's also let's unselect all of those. And we're gonna go ahead and set up another set of reference points in the north. Flying down toward the south. This is going to be our offensive electronic countermeasures mission. Another support mission. I'm not exactly terribly versed in missions, however, so we're going to go in here to ECM settings and change them to active for this particular mission. They'll keep radar and sonar passive, but active offensive counter air or counter electronics. That'll be OECM. And then behind that, we'll also go ahead and set up another sort of patrol line for our AWACS aircraft. That'll be a little bit further back. Airborne early warning. Uh, okay, and then we'll edit the ECM on this as well, and we'll change this to radar active but passive on everything else. So these aircraft will just automatically, anyone assigned to that mission will have their radar on, but everything else off. Uh, for OECM, they'll have their offensive jamming weapons on, but everything else off. For the UAVs, they'll just be observation. And so what we'll do right now is we'll go ahead and get a couple of air operations begun. We'll go ahead and go to our Falcon 1 ECM aircraft. We'll go ahead and assign it to our OECM mission and we'll go ahead and launch it. So it'll just automatically fly this patrol arc down here. Meanwhile, at PAF Mindas, we'll go ahead and assign our Hawkeye 1 Saab 2000 to the AEW mission. And then we'll go ahead and launch it individually as well. But why is it not preparing? Oh, it is preparing to launch. Okay. Okay, um, meanwhile, again, I'm not terribly good with missions, but what I am going to do, let's go ahead and take a look at the overlays on the map here. So you can do different things. You can show, you know, custom layers if you want to set those up. Um, you can also go ahead and change the, um, you know, the satellite map imagery if you want to make it look different. Uh, you can get rid of the BNG layer. You can go ahead and, you know, replace that with... Uh, uh, statum terrain version of the map here so there's a whole bunch of different uh versions of uh of maps and whatnot that you can use in this particular game um i want to do that and then i'm gonna go ahead and show land cover i think because i think land cover influences sight lines so you can see here obviously mountains have a ton of cover um cities have cover, if you will. It kind of makes it hard to see what I'm going to do here. But I think what I want to do, if we zoom in a bit here, the problem with trying to take out enemy units in this area is there there's just not a lot of cover for our aircraft to fly in under to try and spot anything. I don't know that it works this way, but my gut says we should approach from the north from behind this city. Um, and then we can withdraw to the east into the mountains here to have a little bit of cover from enemy like Sam's and things like that. I don't really know if that's how that works, but I don't like the idea of flying across what amounts to a relatively flat plane here without any real cover. I mean, we could come in at 36,000 feet or something like that. I'm not sure how wise that would be either. 
I'm just very nervous about Sam's. I'm not good at taking out enemy uh, Sam sites, and I can't really afford to take a lot of casualties. So we will take land cover uh, into consideration. But that makes it hard to see what we're going to do here. So we've already set up our airborne early warning. Let's also go ahead and set up our drones. So Sunliner 1, go ahead and assign it to UAV. Oh, did I call them both UAV South? I did, didn't I? Uh, which ones are in, actually in the South? That's South. So we should rename this one North. Or can I do that, or do I have to delete the mission? Nope, I was able to rename it. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to that airbase. We'll go ahead and assign one UAV to the northern UAV mission. And then we'll go ahead and assign one UAV to the south. I'm making the assumption the enemy's not going to reveal their position by firing on our UAVs. They may not even get a good radar contact on it. It's a small aircraft, so hopefully it's not too easily detected. And then I'm going to set up two more reference points. One in the north. And one in the south. Oops. And these are going to be stack points. Which is a term I don't know that, that exists. But I'm making it up right now. Basically just to stack aircraft at and get them ready for eventually making strikes. But it's going to be a support mission because I don't really want them doing anything. I just want them sort of loitering there. So I guess rally point north. And I don't know that I'm going to use this one either, but just to have it. Uh, right. And we'll go ahead and set rally point south. this look different oh I set the wrong type of mission I did a strike mission didn't I alright okay so those are good All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to go times five speed and get underway. I'm not going to send any other aircraft up at the moment. UAVs are slow and they're going to take a while to get into position. And the um, offensive counter air and AWACS are slower. And I'd rather they start getting into position as well. Also, let's go ahead and I don't know what the... By the way, this game is currently 50% off, uh, for those of you who are curious, uh, as part of the Steam Summer Sale. I think the sale goes until July 8th, so if you're watching this before then, the game is 50% off. The DLC for Cashmere Fire isn't, but the base game is usually pretty expensive. This is, you know, this is a military borderline government grade simulator. I know it doesn't look all super sexy like some games, um, you know, you're looking at a basic 2D uh, sort of interface with some overlays, uh, but it's still sort of a one-of-a-kind type deal. This is very much like in the vein of Harpoon, um, with very complex weapons systems and things like that being modeled in a game like this. It does look like we have picked up two enemy aircraft out here to the east. It uh, looks like they're a MiG-29 UPG, a Fulcrum A, two MiG-29 UPGs. Doesn't look like they're each packing a wingman, so they must each be each other's wingman. They are also 
um, apparently broadcasting their radar. So they've got their radars turned on. We can see that based on the fact that we're picking up this yellow cone, which is their radar uh, sort of cross section, if you will. It only has sort of this outward direction, has nothing behind them. So very much like a submarine, you could in theory come in behind them, behind in their baffles uh, and get them, you catch them by surprise, but they're a little bit out there. So, um, you know, I can't, I can't hit them with anything quite yet. We are getting our aircraft into position. I'm going to go ahead and have some of my F-16As that have the AMRAMs uh, and the air-to-air -air loadout. I'm going to go ahead and uh, have these guys launch as a group. Uh, so two fighter aircraft so that each have a wingman. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, move them south just to make sure that these MiG-29s can't sweep west and go after my uh, my more vulnerable aircraft uh, without, without any um, warning. I think we're still relatively well off in our current position. But you never know. They could, you know, they're not, they're even at their radar range right now, currently can't even pick up the aircraft I've got in position yet. So are you uh, UAVs? That'll be a different story. They are making their way into position, but these guys are moving slow. They're only moving at 110 knots. Our uh, AWACS is up. And there are our fighters. So let's go ahead and plot these guys in to the east. I don't want to have them send, you know, move at like military speed or afterburners, anything like that. I don't want them to burn too much fuel. Uh, at their current burn rate, you can see they've got about two hours of fuel till they hit bingo. But if we go into like military speed or afterburners or whatnot, that'll uh, that'll drop dramatically drop. You can see the fuel state currently in blue uh, for any aircraft or any unit that you select here. You can see the Hawkeye fuel state five and a half hours to bingo fuel, which means they have to return to base in five and a half hours. The OECM aircraft uh, has about four hours, just shy of four hours. Uh, the can the mission is only three hours and 44 minutes, so fuel should not be an issue for our AWACS or for our uh, offensive uh, air um, jamming aircraft, uh, but it might be an issue for our fighters or other strike aircraft, especially if we start engaging in, uh, you know, using afterburners and stuff like that. Our UAVs, as is um, common with UAVs, have ridiculously good fuel statuses. They can fly for over 12 hours. So I am closing the distance a little bit with my F-16s. Uh, we're flying outside the enemy's uh, radar cone, and our radars are off. We don't need our radars on because our AWACS is allowing us to detect everything. You can see this yellow line here, this yellow circle, uh, is our AWACS's radar uh, range if you will so we can we can see everything out to that range um, and you can see here uh, we do have some bogeys which are unknown aircraft we don't have anything identified as a friend though no, we do have some uh, civilian aircraft here so they may have just picked me up um, you can see we got a slot back radar return for these mig 29s um, but they turned away uh, we probably are also inside the range of the enemy radar facilities uh, especially this uh, psm 33 you can see these white cones represent their radar coverage so we're definitely inside enemy radar coverage so they know something's flying they may not know uh what it is yet though 480 knots probably a military jet but it could be a, some civilian airliner in theory probably not a cessna or cessna or a cherokee they're too slow for that they're also not registered flight plans so everything else that's non-military is much slower right now uh, the, the red cones, by the way, are, I believe, engagement range is probably for our AMRAMs. Let's fly out a little bit to the east. I'm waiting for my UAVs to get into position. That's really the sort of bottleneck at the moment. Is I want those UAVs to get over those targets to see what we can see before I start risking uh, high-value jets. So I'm going to make my fighters look like they're just a screen, which in, in a sense they are, for the um, offensive electronic countermeasure aircraft. We'll see if the enemy MiG-29s turn back to us. I will engage them if I need to. I want to make sure the, the skies are clear and uh, our UAVs would really be sitting ducks to any enemy fighters, and they're pretty close to that southern Ford operating base Serpent. So we'll just wait and see. probably go a little bit faster we're at times five right now let's go to times 15 
You're still flying away from me. You're going to turn the other direction. Four hundred forty knots is that? All right, so I am trying. I guess we'll just engage him now. Let's go ahead and engage his MiG twenty nines. Radar is active. Amrams are away. Let's slow down to times two speed. Amrams are away. The enemy is turned away from us. They're not even turning toward us to try and engage. They could turn back into a snapshot against us. We're flying outside the range of these SA threes. They, they are turning, but it doesn't look like they're turning to snap. You can see those AMRAMs have gone active with those cones now. Their radars are active. They have their own radars for terminal guidance. First, it's like all four missed. Shit. All right, we're going to fire another salvo. I think that's all of our AMRAMs, too. We had eight in that flight. So all of our AMRAMs missed. They never apparently acquired the target. Still outside the range of these SA-3s. I don't know if the enemy has any other SAMs. But they're not even pointed toward us at the moment, so we're going to see if we acquire them here. Got one. Got two. All right. I don't want to go inside the range of that uh, SA-3 battery, so let's... Oh, shit, one of them's on the extreme range, but we should be able to get out of there. So... At this point, we've shot down two enemy MiG-29s. We'll see if they send any other aircraft aloft. But this particular flight of F-16s has kind of used up their usefulness. They have expended all of their long-range missiles. They still have some sidewinders, but any enemy fighters that we go against are going to be able to hit us with beyond visual range missiles well before we ever close range with our sidewinders. So I think we're actually going to go have, ahead and have these guys RTB. Additionally, it does look like we picked up something here. There's a mobile target here, a question mark. We picked up some kind of radar, it looks like. Battle Axe 6 picked it up, which is one of these F-16s. Picked up some transmission here to the east of this Ford operating base. I'm assuming it's probably an enemy SAM base if it's emitting radar, right? That would be the logical thing. I'm assuming it was radar. Just it was detected by our by our radar. Could we actually before we RTB? We're already set to RTB, aren't we? Can I change that? If I give him a course, or is RTB unalterable? Yeah. Let's go ahead and have our. Oh shit. Pause. What's this? Two more bogeys taking off at 560 knots. I'm guessing those are new enemy fighters responding to the fact that we downed their initial cap. So let's get up some additional F 16s. So this other Am Amram group's going to take off. Let's also turn our sensors back on. Radars and OECM active. Just to see what we pick up out this way. If we can detect anything. I don't know if there's anything else out here. I don't know if that's a ground search radar or if it's just air to air. They've got an ALQ-131 pod. But yeah, I'm guessing these guys are, are bad guys. They look like they took off from this enemy air force base. What's the uh, ground cover look like over this way? Or land cover? So in theory, maybe we are coming in behind this enemy city. Now with our radar turned on, one of the thing, key things to keep in mind is the same premise really as exists for um, submarines exists in aircraft in the sense that if you're using active sonar, you get a much better picture of what's going on but when you're using that, you also give the enemy very good imagery of what you're doing. Um, and so they can see that you're transmitting. Passive sensors can see that you're transmitting. Well, uh, the same is true in air combat. When your radar is transmitting, uh, the enemy can detect that radar. So I'm not sure what exactly we picked up with our own sensors over here, but there's something. 
It is saying it's mobile, which means that, you know, it may not be fixed to that same position. All right, my fighters are airborne. We're going to go ahead and plot this. Air patrol south. I mean, if it's a ground combat I'm contact, I'm almost 100% sure it's hostile. Let's do this. Why the hell not? We're going to fire one of these Hat F7s, which again is a... is a... Pakistani Tomahawk. You know, whatever these guys are flying northeast. There's also some additional bogeys down here to the southeast. One of them making 520, two of them making 500 plus knots. So there could be four enemy aircraft aloft. Now, I don't see anything else making that speed of these unidentified bogeys. So the enemy might have four aircraft aloft at the moment. I'm really not going to pick anything up with this flights. I'm curious. Oh, they're broadcasting. Su-30 MKIs. And Mark II flanker H's. All right, so these are more modern versions of the Su-30. These guys are to be feared. For sure. I, again, I don't know. I'm assuming these guys are up here are more enemy fighters as well, but for sure two enemy flankers are airborne, flying in close proximity. Our own fighters are heading south, currently outside the enemy radar coverage. At this range we should be safe from anything the Sioux might have. Meanwhile, you can see our Hat of 7 is cruising in at 500 knots, 23, 22, 2100 feet ASL, just a bit over 600. It's fluctuating a bit. It's coming in and over a little bit of terrain. So I don't know if these Sioux are chasing me, but at this range, I mean, in theory, it looks like we're probably inside their missile range, but we're going the opposite direction at pretty good speed. I don't think they could fire a, an air-to-air -air missile at me at this range. Oh, we're picking up some additional targets here. Mobile 428 and 427. Now that are UAV or maybe our sensors. I don't know what picked it up. These are all from Battle Axe 6 and 5, so our F-16s. It makes me kind of want to keep these guys on station for a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and launch one Tomahawk at each. And the logic is... Oh, did I just do one? But the, the logic is, on my end, is these guys may not end up getting through and hitting anything, but if we do launch them, it'll give me an idea of what they are if we've got a, a sensor over them that can pick up what the enemy is. So I'm going to turn this F-16 flight back as these Tomahawks get closer, or these Hadifs get closer to try and see what we might be able to detect if the enemy shoots anything at us. I don't imagine them being mobile targets that will hit them. You know, if it's a vehicle and it's moving and we fire a tomahawk against it, it's not it's not the smart munition that's going to acquire and destroy the target. Fire control radar active. These guys are still outside the range of those Su-30s radar, but it's getting close. I'd rather come in on the side. Where did those 500 knot aircraft go? They turned back this way, so they're well out of any potential threat. So we're going to go ahead and move these guys adjacent to the plot. I'm curious to see how far north these uh, enemy Su's are going to come. I don't want to try and stay out of their radar cone. Ground-based radar will give you a picture. I couldn't even turn my own ground-based radar, which currently are turned off. I could turn them on. You can see here, but it doesn't give you quite as, as good a picture, I don't think. As AWACS. Look down radar versus ground radar. 
Oh. So we've got two pairs of Su 30s up. Oh, fuck. Well, that's a lot of, uh, quality enemy air. Plus, whatever these guys are up here. We might have six enemy aircraft in the air. To that end. Let's go ahead and get some of our... Uh, I hate the idea of using our F-16Cs in a dogfight, but they do have some AMRAMs. So we'll launch two more of them. They're really coming north. I wonder if they're making a play on this UAV. Alright, let's actually get ready to turn this guy around. Although maybe my AWACS will pick up whatever gets, if anything, gets shot at the uh, cruise missiles. Still trying to keep these guys out of the radar range of the Sioux, out of their f fire control radar. Not a terrible idea. Their own AMRAMs can't really hit as far out. I'm not sure what the range of the missiles on the Su-30s is, though. Alright, so our Sunliner has these three spots it flies over. Didn't get any better visual on Mobile 428. Apparently it can't pick anything up. Its sensors are off, though. It's passive. Alright. New F-16 is going to move in here. Alright, so these guys should be ready to turn. Oh shit, they're going to be just out of range, aren't they? Of these uh, Tomahawk type missiles to pick up what it might be. We could kick it up to Afterburner to speed them up a bit. These Sioux really are coming coming west. Northwest. Okay. Curious what they're going for. I don't like the idea of one-to-one -one odds against these Su 30s. Let's go ahead and get two more F-16s up. It does mean we are getting we're dogfighting with aircraft that are stacked full of laser guided bombs. Not the most efficient way to fight. These two groups are pretty close together though. I guess the good thing is these F-16s can go defensive right away without having to worry about closing for a, for a strike. Maybe the enemy will waste some missiles at long range and then I can just turn around and flee. Yeah, let's go to afterburner. You can see we'll go to bingo fuel in 11 minutes with afterburners, but I'm trying to get this hat of seven back inside our radar coverage before it closes in on this target, whatever this target may be. I don't know if my UAV could be nice if it had slightly better sensors. What does it even have? So the CH3 derivative has derivative UAV has generic TV camera, a FLIR infrared surveillance camera and a laser designator, so it doesn't have any radar. It's probably the reason its uh, cone is so small. I really don't like the idea of getting these F-16s like, way out ahead. They're going to totally get shot at. Pretty big dogfight shaping up here.
Let's fly north. The cruise missile's really getting in close on that target, whatever it is. And it apparently destroyed it? Maybe we can pick on these two Sioux in the south. What did we destroy? And did, did we destroy, I guess? Let's take a look. Mission log, weapon, weapon damage. Had a 7, 700 kilogram HE, it missed. Said it missed. Missed, so it was going at an enemy SAM battery. But the battery disappeared. It is saying we destroyed four enemy... Akadish. As well as two MiG 29s. So we hit the targets? Maybe it was a near miss was enough to destroy or damage the enemy? One vehicle also destroyed? I don't get any points for it, but at least it'll make hitting the target down here in the south easier if we took out an enemy sand battery. Or was it a miss on their part shooting at me? Weapon end game. Hmm. No, it just says mobile vanished. But I don't know if the scoring thing is like if there's no fog of war on it. I'm not 100% sure. I wonder if they're going after this UAV. Meanwhile, these two surface-to-surface uh, -surface missiles in the north. Oh, shit. No, turn around. Detonation here. Sam. Oh, enemy Sam. So an enemy, so this is a Sam battery then. Well, that's good to know. That's what I needed to know. This particular mobile unit is a Sam. I'm guessing this one is not because it didn't report anything. We also destroyed one erosion main battle tank. So I'm guessing this is a mechanized formation right here. But this is definitely a same battery. All right, so I'm going to book it out of here. I don't want these F-16s getting chopped up by these Su-30s. They're already well within missile range. They did what they wanted, what we needed them to figure out. This mobile 427, this is a same battery. Meanwhile, it does look like these Su-30s are booking it down to engage this UAV, so I'm going to go ahead and have my F-16s down here engage. Second flight of F-16s with G GBUs are going to go ahead and engage these Su-30s, which also appear to be heading north on this other UAV. And then we'll hold this group of uh, F-16s in reserve. So these guys are going to immediately move to engage offensive. Nope. Cancel your plotted course. I want you to engage. These guys are already in well within range, missile range on the UAV. Flight 1137 with its eight AMRAM C5s. There we go. We're launching. So we launched two sets of two. So we're launching two AMRAMs at each aircraft. They did turn toward us, so they may have done a snapshot of a medium-range missile down the site of the incoming radar detection. The northern group is firing at the uh, northern group of Su-30s. No indication of incoming enemy missiles yet. Missiles have gone active. 
Got one of them. So we'll turn and fire again. Two more AMRAMs targeting the enemy. I'm curious that they didn't get their shots off. The Su-30 is usually deadly as hell. You know, these guys look like they're turning away also. Oh, there we go. Enemy missile. 34 nautical miles. They did get at least one off. Two off for sure. It'd be nice if we switched over to engage defensive. If three missiles are in the air. Come on, guys. Your missiles are away. They've got their own radars. Just turn and, and run. I could tell them to, but... All right, we got it. Why are you not engaged defensive? There's four enemy missiles incoming. Active seekers, they're turning, so they've acquired. First missed. Second missed. Third missed. Fourth missed, thank God. Okay, so all of those enemy missiles missed. Meanwhile, we took out those two Su-30s in the south. Did we get the ones in the north also? Hell yeah! Okay. So we haven't lost any aircraft yet, and we have shot down four Sukhlov. <laughs> oh boy! Yes. All right, so we have shot down four Su-30 MKIs, as well as two MiG-29 Fulcrums. Six enemy aircraft destroyed so far without loss. The enemy looks like those missiles that were fired at us were AA-12 Adders, or R-77s. The enemy has also launched two Derby Spider MRs, which I believe are like a truck portable, medium range, short range SAM. So that must have been what... Oh shit, more enemy aircraft? So it looks like there's... Is it two sets or just two more? Two MiG-29s. Heading north, that must have been those other aircraft that we spotted. We also do have two more unidentified targets here. Okay, so what do these guys have left? Two AMRAMs. They're not in range yet. This group fired off all of their... They've got an hour left of fuel. Let's assign these guys to Rally Point South. Just to get them out of the way. They've got about an hour left of fuel, so they can hit the southern target with their GBUs. But let's not get them engaged by those MiGs. Meanwhile, these guys still have their AIM-120s. So we're going to go ahead and engage these MiGs. I don't really know what range the missiles on the enemy... MIGs have but we'll I mean they obviously know we're here they're racing down south so we'll engage them what do they carry Let's check that out. Let's go into the database here. MiG-29 UPG Fulcrum A India 2013 model. They carry what? What are their air-to-air -air loadouts? They can carry the A-10 Alamo. 32 nautical miles. That's an older missile. They do carry the A-12 Adder, so the R-77, the same missile as what the Sioux were firing at us. The SUs or the Sukolovs. Max range 45 nautical miles. That looks like it's the longest range of their air to air missiles. 45 nautical. What is the AIM 120C5's range? Up to 60 nautical miles. Okay. So we do outrange it by about 15 nautical miles. The AIM 120C5's, is that what both aircraft carry? Yeah. Okay. So we do outrange them by about 15 nautical miles, but both coming head on, that's not going to be, not going to have that much. I mean, we'll close that distance pretty damn fast. I, and I don't know that we're going to fire at extreme range either. 
Maybe we should. I mean, the enemy can turn away, but I think they're going to keep closing to try and get in range. So let's do... We are firing at extreme range. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Let's not give them the benefit of the doubt then. Do we need to guide these in or can we just turn and run? These are fire and forget, I believe. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Command Modern Operations uh, in the Kashmir Fire DLC, the newest DLC pack out for Command Modern Operations. Command is 50% off right now uh, as part of the Steam sale. It is 50% off until July 8th. Uh, so if you're interested, pick that up. Uh, I'm not being paid anything for this video or anything like that. Uh, so not really trying to push that on anyone. But it is a very unique and interesting sort of warfare and simulation type game. There are 3D options uh, through a program called TacView. That is something you have to purchase separate from the game. It is made by a different company. But TacView is a game that allows you to do like replays through programs like Microsoft Flight Sim and Command Modern Operations. If you want to see the, the battle in 3D in real time, it's not the same thing as playing a flight sim. Uh, the models are kind of like, it's a big blue block that looks like the outline of an F-16 or a blue block that looks kind of like a missile. It's not like the same thing, uh, but it, it does let you visualize things uh, in an interesting way. And so if that is something you're interested in, there is an integration where you can run this. I didn't pull that up in this particular uh, video or, or scenario at all. Uh, I was more focused on trying to win the scenario. But with that being said, we'll pick this up next time. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, until next time, I'm out.